What's up guys and welcome to another Blender tutorial. Today we're going to be tackling this render. As you can see it's another psychedelic style animation. So if you haven't been following my channel and the videos I've been putting out, you're probably going to recognise some of the techniques I'm going to show. But regardless, you're still going to end up with this really cool render. Uh, this one was actually requested by one of my followers on Instagram. So if you do follow my work on there, feel free to leave a comment if you see anything that you want a tutorial on. I'm happy to help you guys out with that. Um, and if you're not following me yet, I'll just leave my handle down there. It's just at Nevmotion. So yeah. Anyway, on with the tutorial. Right, so once you've got Blender open, first thing you're going to do is delete the default cube. So hit X, delete, we'll hit Shift A, we'll add a mesh, and we'll add a UV sphere. Go into edit mode, so hit tab. Make sure you've selected all the vertices, so just hit A. And now you want to hit F3, and you want to search for edge split. Now come out of edit mode, come to your modifier section here. And we're going to add a modifier, and we're going to add a smooth modifier. And that's going to allow us to create some interesting patterns that we can animate later. Just leave it at 0.5 for now. Now we're going to add another modifier and we're going to add a displace modifier. And this is going to allow us to use the texture to displace the mesh and also animate it in an interesting way. So with your displace modifier added, make sure you've dragged it to the top because we need it at the top of the hierarchy in order for this to work. We're going to add a new texture. We're going to come down to our texture properties. And we're going to change the type to marble and we're going to pump the size up and then we're going to drop the depth down and you're going to get this interesting shape here. Now, we want to animate this texture shape. So I want you to hit Shift A, add an empty and we're going to add an empty cube. And we're just going to create a simple animation of this cube, of it rotating 360 degrees um, so that we have a perfect loop. So I want you to drag the timeline up, and we're going to make this a 5 second loop. So at 24 frames per second, that's going to be 120 frames. So with your empty selected, come to your transform settings, and we're going to add a keyframe on the y-axis. Make sure you're at frame 1 and add a keyframe. We're going to come to frame 121, change the y axis to 360, and add another keyframe. The reason why we put it to 121 is so that we do not get a duplicate frame, which will cause an unwanted glitch in your render. So, with those keyframes applied, I want you just to come to your timeline, hover your mouse over it, hit A and then T, and we're going to change the interpolation to linear. Great, so now we have this animation of this cube rotating. Now, I want this cube to essentially control the displacement that we just created on the sphere and this is going to create some interesting movement on the object so to do that click on our sphere and I want you to come back to your modifier section so this little spanner and on your displace I want you to change the coordinate to object now click on the object and assign that to your empty that's going to now link the empty to your displacement and now when you hit play you should see some interesting movement and you can tame this out by just scaling the cube up or alternatively you can drop the strength on the displacement modifier these two methods will affect it in different ways but for now we'll just leave the empty scaled up and we might play with that later so next step come to your sphere we're going to add a new modifier and i want to add a solidify modifier so select solidify and we're going to come down here and we're going to bring the thickness down so it solidifies sort of outwards and we're not going to go too crazy with that just about 0.13 I think looks good. Just gives the object a bit more depth. Great. I'm going to add a wireframe modifier now and you're going to see what that does. I want to keep the faces and just keep the wireframe over the edges. So I'm going to uncheck this box here which says replace original. And what's cool about it as well is you can easily assign a separate material to just the wireframe which we will do in a second. But first we're going to add our final modifier and that's going to be the mirror modifier. And this is so that we get perfect symmetry with the movement in the displacement. So add a modifier and we'll add a mirror. Now come down to your mirror modifier and we want to select every axis and we also want to select bisect on each one. Now your computer may start to struggle once you've added this modifier and checked all of these axes and it's because it's still calculating all the verts um, before it's been applied and that's including all your wireframe which is going to add verts and solidify so it ends up creating quite a lot for your computer to handle but unfortunately we're just going to have to deal with this for now because we need the mirror modifier to be active in order for this to work but don't worry because we're not going to really be adding much else to the scene we're just going to do some simple animation on the smooth modifier now to get that interesting effect so first of all let's align our camera we're going to click on our camera we'll hit Alt G and then Alt R 
which resets the location and the rotation. Hit G and then Z to bring the camera up, but if you hit zero, it takes you into camera view. So we hit G and then Z again, and we'll just bring it up. We'll bring it up to about here, just so you can get the whole thing in. And now we can start to animate this smooth modifier, and you'll see that we can get some really interesting patterns when you combine it with that movement in the displacement. So I'm just going to turn my overlays off, hit play, and you'll sort of see what I mean. You get these really cool sort of psychedelic sort of movements. So we're just going to do a simple animation. So first thing I'm going to do is just save the file because um, I don't want the project to crash. <laughs> so yeah, just save the file somewhere you can find it. So I'm going to start my animation at 2.09 and on the smooth modifier just hit I on the keyboard and that's going to add a keyframe. So we're going to put that on frame 1. Now we're going to hit Shift D on this and we're just going to drag that to frame 121. This makes sure that we have the same position on the smooth modifier on the first frame as we do on the last frame and that's going to create a loop. And now we're just going to come to the middle frame which would be 61 and we're going to pump this factor up to about I think we'll say about 5.7 just add a keyframe and let's have a look at that now that's pretty cool isn't it now I don't like how these bits here are sort of poking out so I'm just gonna go to my wireframe modifier and I'm gonna turn off even thickness and that should fix that great I think we can start shading this now save what we've got and I'm just going to hit Z and then 8 and it's going to take us into render mode and now we can start doing some interesting things so first thing I want to do is delete the light because we don't need that we're going to be using emission and it's going to look like you can't see much now and that's because obviously we've deleted the light in the scene so first thing I want you to do is come to the world settings and we're going to make the background black and next step like I said before I wanted to use emission shading to sort of light up the scene so we're going to go to our sphere and we're going to add a material, we'll add a new one. So we're just going to leave this first one as it is, this is going to be the base material of the sphere. We're going to add a new one and this second material is going to be our emission. So if you come to the surface here where it says principal BSDF, we're going to change that to an emission shader and you can see it's had no effect and that's because we haven't assigned the material to the wireframe yet. So if you come back to your modifier section, come to your wireframe one, it should be your fourth one down, this little one here. And on material offset, just put that to one. And now you can see we have emission shaders only on the wireframe and we have this sort of base material on the faces. Now I'm just going to do some more simple shading on this using the shader editor. So if you come to your materials here, I want to change this material to something a bit more interesting. So first of all, I'm going to pump the strength up to 8, and I'm a bit limited to what I can do in here. So put your mouse over to the top corner here, and you'll see the mouse changes into a little cross. Just drag that window in, and we're going to come to this little thing here, and we're going to go to Shader Editor. Now just drag that in, and this is going to allow us to do some more interesting things. So in this Node Editor, I'm going to hit Shift A, I'm going to add a color ramp. Just pop that there. And if you plug the color into the emission shader, this little thing is going to allow us to crunch in two colors. So if I push this slider in, it goes more black. If I push this slider in, it goes more white, but it's hard to tell. So that's what that does. So I'm going to hit Shift A and I'm going to add a noise texture. So come to texture, add a noise texture, and we're going to pop that there. Just plug the FAC into the FAC. And now you'll see when I drag these sliders in, it sort of does it in an interesting way. And that is the pattern of the noise texture. But I want to assign two different colors to this now. So I'm going to come to this white slider and I'm going to click on this bit here. I'm going to make it sort of deep blue, I think. We'll say there. Crunch this in. And now when you start to drag in the black, you can see those patterns again. But we can make this a different color if you like. So click on that, pump that up. You can make it sort of orangey color if you like. I quite like that. Now I'm going to put that here. And I'm just going to change some parameters here. I'm going to pop the detail down and I'm just going to drop the roughness down as well on the noise texture. But I also want to add another parameter on this color ramp. So I'm going to click on the plus button. I'm just going to add a new slider. So I click on this middle slider now and I can change the color here to, you can make it, you can give sort of black edges to your noise texture. 
obviously you guys can play around with it how you like and you can move that around to your taste around there looks good cool so that's pretty much that done with the shading I'm just going to add a bit more depth to this scene now so if you come back to your viewport so just hit Z and then 4 and that will bring you back to this if your computer is struggling a bit I'm going to turn my overlays back on and I just want to add another sphere so hit shift A add a mesh and we're going to add a UV sphere and we're going to use the sphere to add some reflections to reflect the light coming off the emission of the object that we just created and it's going to create these interesting kaleidoscopic patterns which I think looks really cool so first of all you just want to scale it up so it fits the entire object in so just press play make sure none of the object clips through the sphere because obviously it expands throughout the animation with the displacement and I can't see it poking out at any point so I think that's good maybe just scale it a little bit further just in case now I'm going to scale this sphere on the Z axis up until it reaches the camera point so hit S and then Z and just bring that all the way up until you cover the whole camera and now if you hit 0 you should be able to see that the object fits fully inside the sphere and I'm just going to get rid of this window now because I don't need it so just click on the top corner again and just drag it in the same way that you dragged it out and that should get rid of that cool now let's start shading it again so we're going to shade we're going to shade the outer sphere now so hit Z and then 8 go back to rendered mode we're going to turn off our overlays and we're going to click on our second sphere and we're just going to come to the material settings this little thing here we're going to add a new material so we're going to leave it as a principal BSDF but we're going to pump the metallic up and then we're going to drop the roughness all the way down but you're going to see it's having no effect at the moment and that's because we need to change a few settings in our render properties so come over here to render properties we're using Eevee by the way we're going to add ambient occlusion bloom but I'm going to drop the bloom down because I think it's quite strong screen space reflections this is the important one this is where we're going to get all of these reflections now you can see what's happening here and we're going to add I think we'll add motion blur actually yeah we're going to add motion blur but when you add motion blur one important thing you need to move all your keyframes back a frame because it won't render motion blur on the first frame for some reason so if you just hit A click on your sphere hit A and then G and just bring it back one so that it falls on 120 and then you start on frame 0 and I think we'll need to do it on the empty as well so yeah, so hit A, G, cool. So yeah, back to our render properties. We've added these, great. We're gonna come to our color management now. We're gonna make this very high contrast. Just makes it pop a bit better. And I'm gonna bring the gamma down to 0.8. One thing I will change, I think the wireframes are a bit thick on this. So I'm gonna go back to the sphere, click on the modifier, and on wireframe, I'm just gonna drop the thickness down a little bit. I think about 0 0.01 looks good. Great. I'm just going to go to the camera settings now. Uh, actually, back to the sphere, back to the material. I think I'm going to drop the base color down a bit. This uh, can help you tame the reflections a bit. So the darker you make the base color of your reflective sphere, the less reflections you get. Or you can pump it all the way up. But I think it looks a bit crazy sometimes. So I think around here maybe. So I'm going to come to the camera settings and I just want to start off the animation with a low focal length we'll say about 18 millimeters we're going to apply a keyframe and we're going to duplicate this first frame actually just bring it back to zero because of what we did earlier because of the motion blur bring that to zero duplicate that keyframe and we're going to put that at 120 now come to frame 60 and we're going to bring focal length in to about here and we're going to apply a keyframe and hit A, T and make sure this is set to Bezier rather than Linear. It should already be like that in your preferences but if, you might, if you've changed it then just make sure that that's set to Bezier so you get a sort of bounce as you come out. Right so we're pretty much done there. Only thing left to do now is to render the animation. Uh, now it does look a bit weird because it is running very slowly um, and that's because there's a lot of calculations going on but once you render it out it will look awesome. I promise you that. So uh, yeah, if you come to your output settings, we're going to just change a few things here. Now you just want to save it somewhere you can find it. So just anywhere other than the TMP, this is where the render is going to come out. 
So yeah, just find somewhere to save it. Change the file format FFmpeg video. Encoding, that needs to be MP4. And video codec, set that to H.264 with the output quality as perceptually lossless. Then all you've got to do is come to render and then render animation and you're done. Right, thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Like I said, this one was requested by one of my followers on Instagram. So if you do follow my work on there, I encourage you to leave a comment on anything that you want to learn. Um, so if you see any renders that you like, just leave a comment and I'm happy to show you how I made it. I also want to let you know that I've just launched my Patreon. Um, so if you want to support me directly, uh, feel free to do that. Um, the link will be in the description. And yeah, I really appreciate any support you guys can give me if you do enjoy the content I'm putting out. And if you're not ready to commit to that, the least you could do is just like the video and subscribe to my YouTube channel so I can continue to grow and put out more content like this. If you want to play around with the project file, I'll be leaving a link to that on my website. You can find that at nevmotion.co.uk.